Welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to show you step by step how to make the Akatsuki cloak from Naruto and this is going to be a ton of fun. We're even going to be doing the materials afterwards and this main thing here obviously is the cloth sewing. We're going to be making this really simple pattern letting it kind of stitch together like so in an animation. I'm going to show you exactly where you can get a model to follow along with. It's all free, there's no paywalls. And if you want to see my final result and download that, that is always available on my Patreon as well if anybody's interested down in the description below. So let's jump in and make this into a reality. So first of all, you, if you want a character to use to follow along with, you can go to adobemixamo.com. You can just type in Mixamo.com, create a free account, and then once you're on there, you can just go ahead and choose characters. So I'm just gonna go with something that doesn't have any clothing on, just so we have a nice base character to work with to make our cloak. So you're gonna click on your character of choice, and then you just have to go to the little animations tab here, and then you can just type in something like walk, and then just go for like a walking animation, right? This will do good. Just make sure you hit in place, so the character stays in place. Then you can go ahead, download, and then go to frames per second and make it 24, since that is the default in Blender, and then go ahead and download the FBX. And then you're just gonna go to an image search browser and just type in Akatsuki logo, or even Akatsuki logo PNG, and get something with a transparent background, and there should be something, I'm just gonna go with something. Um, you'll definitely find something. So this one looks like it has transparency, so I'm just gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and save image as. And I'll just save it in my downloads and call it what it is, okay? So there we go. So now I'm gonna to go to my downloads and in here I have the walking FBX and I have the logo with the transparency in the background. So now let's jump in to Blender. And then we're gonna press A to select everything and press delete. And then let's go file, let's go import FBX. And in my case, that's in my downloads folder. I'm just gonna go walking FBX, click on it. And here it's imported it. And if we go shift A, let's just quickly actually add back in the cube just for size reference. And let's just grab the character and the rig. And uh, let's just go S and scale that up till it's about this big. Okay, just make it a little bit bigger. And then let's just select a mesh and go control A or command A and apply to scale. That's important. So I'm gonna select the cube, just delete it. Let's select the rig and press M and go new collection. And just call it rig and go okay. And uh, what we want to do with this rig is we're going to come over here to where it's the animation. And with it selected, let's just go in to pose mode. And with all of these bones active, press A to select them all. You're just going to select the keyframes here. Let's just move them up to about 10 and then go shift D to duplicate them. Like so, just to make a bit of a loop. And then let's just bring this end frame value down to something like 57. So now from 10 to here, we should have a loop. Okay, cool. And then from, uh, let's just go to about frame eight. Let's enable auto king and then go alt G, alt R, alt S, just to reset the transforms. And let's just grab this keyframe and go shift D and drag it to frame one. And let's turn off auto king. So it's gonna start with a pose like this. In fact, I'm just gonna drag this forward a bit just so we have it from about here. And then it kicks in like this, okay? So maybe I'll just go and take this up to 65 frames. Grab these end ones, just move it up a bit. Because we want it to start in a T pose, but we don't want to go too quickly. Like there, okay, that should be fine. So we have a T pose, and then it just slowly goes into the walk cycle. We will eventually, after caching, take it up like so, so the whole thing's going to be loopable. But this little trick will allow us to kind of get it started in a T pose. It's going to make the whole process a lot more practical. So now let's go back into object mode. Let's just hide our rig, and now we are ready to start. So make sure to save. I'm just going to also save this to my desktop. And let's go ahead, save Blender file. And now let's go Shift A, let's add in a plane. And let's go G, Z, move it up to the middle here and then tab into edit mode and then go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. And then go G, Y and move it forward like so. Now go into your front orthographic view and let's go Control R, add in a loop in the middle. Select half of this and then go delete and delete the vertices. And let's give this a mirror modifier. Let's enable clipping, so when we move this, it all sticks together. I'm gonna to go into X-ray mode up here. You can do wireframe if you want. But let's go and grab these bottom verts and go G and move them down to about here. And we'll maybe move this one in just a bit down here and then grab this top one and then move this one in like so. 
And once we have it here, kind of in the corner of the armpit, we're gonna grab these two verts at the top, E to extrude and extrude it up to just where the bottom of the neck is and over the shoulder here, like so. And then let's grab these two verts over here and go E to extrude, extrude it out to the end of the hand, S to scale it up, make it quite big like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Control R and roll in about this many loops here. Control R, roll in about two over here. And then Control R, let's just roll in a few over here. And Control R, roll one in here. And what we're trying to do is just roughly make some squares. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just roughly squares. So let's right click and go subdivide. And let's go to our subdivision tab and bump it up. Now, the more you add, the better this is gonna look, but I'm gonna go up to about three. And um, yeah, that gives us something to start with. So now let's go over here and make the collar for the neck. So we're gonna come here and just select these verts over here. So let's go about this many in. E to extrude and Z, and let's extrude it up to about here. And let's go G and move it out a bit. And then just, just space these out a bit more evenly up here, like so. Control R, roll in a few loops like this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A to select everything. We're gonna go E to extrude and extrude it back, like so. And maybe a bit more forward. And now let's turn off X-ray. And let's go to our overlays. Let's enable the normals. And the normals are currently facing inwards. We don't want that. So we're gonna press A to select everything. Alt N and let's recalculate the outside. And now let's go to our face select option and let's select all of the openings. So I'm gonna select these top faces, X and delete faces, where we have an opening for the hands, X, delete those faces, and in the bottom here. And we're gonna select these and go X and delete those openings. Now we're just gonna go Shift Alt and left click and just select all of these guys running from here all the way up to here. So it kind of makes like an L shape. And then these ones over here, so Shift and Alt, left click and just select all of these I guess another easy way you could do that is just go into the right um, wireframe view and just click and drag like this. And then you have them all active. And then you're gonna go X. And this time you're gonna go only faces. It's a very big difference to faces. We only wanna get to faces, but it leaves in the edges for us. And then we're also gonna come over here and just select these faces over here. And then go to the back here and select these faces and go X and only faces. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna tab back out. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate this and go M and go New Collection. It's just called Spare, just in case you mess anything up. And let's turn off the Spare for the viewport and the render. Now let's grab this guy. Let's come to the drop down and apply. Then we're gonna tab into Edit Mode and let's go in here and Shift Alt, left click with the Edge Select and just select the edges running down like so. And then you're gonna go Control B and create a bevel, like so. With those faces still selected, you're gonna go X, and you can go only faces, like that. And then one thing we can do is also just select these edges that run in between here, these edges in the middle, like so. So just make sure it's just these guys, like so, that just connect the collar over here. And then you're gonna press X, and you're gonna go um, Dissolve Edges or maybe just X and edges, there we go. So now we have that done, let's tab back out. Let's now grab our character mesh. Once again, if you have scaled anything in object view, make sure to go Control A and apply that scale for the interaction scale. That's gonna be really important. And then go to your modifiers and give it a collision, okay? So anything that needs to collide, make sure it has a collision. And the normals on this model are also facing outward, which is good. Then grab your cloth. Go to your physics, give it a cloth, and then let's change the quality steps to 12. Let's go down to our shape. Let's enable sewing, and let's give it a strength of 12 to start off with. And let's go under to collisions. Let's give it self collision and bump the quality up to five. Make sure to save, and let's now go to frame one. Let's hit the space bar. And you can see this is what we have so far. We'll cache it out in a second. So I'm just gonna quickly pause. I'm gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. And let's just quickly, before we go any further, just do a few things I like to do. Go to your materials. Let's go plus and let's go new and call it black. And let's just come here to the viewport display and make it kind of black. Then we're gonna come here plus new. Let's just call this red. It's gonna be the inside. And then let's go to our modifiers and let's give this a, a solidify. Let's come to the materials and let's come 
uh, okay, to the materials here, and let's come to the material offset and make it one. And then let's just go back to our materials and with this red in the viewport, let's just give it a red so we can see that better. So now the inside has some red and we also have some thickness. We're also gonna go ahead and just give this a subdivision surface modifier. Smooth things out. And yeah, so what we can do now is go to frame one. With our cloth selected, let's just go over to our physics and let's just make sure to come here to our cache and let's make it 65 frames, whatever the end value is of your animation. Make sure to save and then go ahead and click bake. And here we have our cloth simulation, but the problem is it jumps at the front like so. So what we're gonna do is gonna come here to our start and let's just drag it up to the point to where our animation kind of starts the walk cycle. So we initially added in that T pose, which is only temporary. So now if we go to the end and start values, they should be um, the same, the frames, more or less. And you're not really gonna notice it and it's gonna look more or less loopable like so. So now let's make sure to save and let's grab our cloth here. Let's go to our render settings. Let's make it cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under the max samples, let's make it something like 50. And then let's go to our shading workspace. I'm just gonna go shift A, just add in an area light, move it over and then go R to rotate. And now I can go into my rendered mode here. I'll bump up the strength, something like 120, scale it a little bit, maybe 220. Okay, and you can duplicate this light a few times if you wish, go something like that. So now we have a setup here. So let's grab this and let's first of all go to our materials. Let's take the red and at least take the base color here. Let's just give it a nice reddish color like so. Now let's go to the black and now let's go shift a search and get a velvet BSDF. Put it over the principle and let's go shift a search and get a mix shader. Let's plug these two into each other, like so. Let's make this value 0.6. And let's come over to the base color here and drag and then type an image. Let's get an image texture and go for color. Let's go open and I'm gonna to go to my downloads and get that Akatsuki logo with the PNG. Click on it. And then I'm gonna now go over into my UV editing workspace. Go into the front view and if you go Z and you go material preview, you can see this, but it's not projecting right. So let's roughly come in here. Let's grab our um, face select option and let's come in here, probably about the middle area here. And let's just select some faces we want that logo to be. And let's just go U and let's go project from view. And then we're gonna come over here and grab it and just scale it up and just kind of place it over our logo here, like so. And then we're gonna go Control I or Command I to inverse the selection. So that's everything else selected. And then in our front view, we're just gonna go U and project from view. And now we're just gonna grab this and go S to scale, G to move it. Let's just put it here in this negative space. And by default, it should make it black. Let's tab back out. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see we have that logo. So now we just have to go back into our shading workspace. Let's just take the velvet here and let's just make that darker as well, like that. And now we have our material all done. So let's go back into our layout. Shift A, let's add in a plane, scale it up. And what we're gonna do is in edit mode, let's just grab this back edge and go E to extrude and Z. Grab the edge and go Control B to give it a bevel. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And then you're gonna go into your front view, shift A, add in a camera. Place your camera at the front. Get a nice position that you like, something like this. Control B, drag over the camera to limit the rendering to the camera. And now we can go Z and go rendered. And let's just grab our background. Let's go to our materials, give it a new material. I'm just gonna go with a nice orangey kind of background or something that I feel complements this. And you can also go to your rural properties and under your back color, give it a sky texture and bring the strength down to 0 0.2 or something like that. And you can mess around with the sun rotation. Whatever works for you, um, just try some different things until you get a nice lighting situation. Um, on my 
just, I don't know, go something like this. Maybe I'll grab my camera and just give it a focal length of 120 instead. Zoom back a bit, more up. And then let's go ahead and render and render image. And there we have it. You could probably make this more realistic by adding some better textures to it, but more or less we have it. I think a big thing that can be improved here is some HDR lighting, if you have some. That always makes a really big difference, but more or less, I mean, like you guys kind of see where we're going with this. It's a pretty simple thing to do. So I will be uploading my original to Patreon. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this and don't forget under your render settings to enable motion blur as well. It makes a big difference. So I'll see you guys next time.